Hi, this short tutorial will touch upon the basics of footnotes and bibliographies. Bibliographies are sometimes called works cited page. While researching your paper, you will consult many different sources, sometimes books or articles, interviews, web pages, all sorts of materials. Make sure to keep a complete list of what you have read and include all the pertinent information such as an author's name, title of the book or the article, publisher, and year of publication. Make sure that you also show on websites the date that you accessed those websites. When doing your research, you will often encounter information that you didn't know before. Sometimes that information is simply factual and available in multiple sources. For instance, before work on your paper about Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, you may not have known where and when Beethoven was born, but while reading, you find out that he was born in 1770 in Bonn, Germany. Other examples of facts are that Mozart wrote 41 symphonies or that Debussy won the Prix de Rome in 1884. These are all facts and are readily available to any scholar familiar with the subject. These are called common knowledge facts. Other times you may encounter opinions about your subject that influence the way that you approach a particular composer or piece of music. For example, a scholar may suggest that Beethoven's fourth piano concerto second movement was actually inspired by the Greek myth of Orpheus. It is completely natural that the more that you read and think about your subject, you may modify your approach to that composer, performer, or work. These are called opinions. Another good example is that Mozart's piano concerti often follow the rules of rhetoric. Once you have finished the preliminary stages of research, you should have a list of all the sources that you have used. This will eventually become your bibliography or your works cited page. Your bibliography should look like this. And here is a good example of the way a bibliography should be formatted. There are a whole bunch of things that you really should be aware of. Number one, bibliographies are single spaced with a double space only between entries. In the second line of a bibliography, entries are indented five spaces. And Bibliographies are in alphabetical order by the author's last name. Now that you're writing, the question then becomes, why do you need to footnote within the body of your paper? Footnotes tell the reader where a particular idea, fact, or opinion can be found. Any sentence that contains ideas or opinions from another person even if it is not a direct quote, still needs a footnote. Even if you change the words from a source or paraphrase, you will still need to footnote. When you do not footnote, you are indicating that the ideas or analyses you are presenting are all your own. It is perfectly acceptable and sometimes even desirable to have many footnotes in your paper while you are writing. It's not a bad thing. It is actually worse to have too few footnotes because if you do not cite things properly, you may be engaging in plagiarism or academic dishonesty. Plagiarism, simply put, is trying to take other people's ideas and pass them off as your own. Some people do this deliberately, but other times they simply forget to footnote or don't know how to cite things properly. That's why it is so important when you are researching that you be organized and keep a complete record of everything you looked at and where you found all of your information. So one of the reasons you cite is to avoid plagiarism. The next question, when do you need to use a footnote? Here's examples of when you need to footnote. The simplest is when you directly quote someone else's words. This could even be a letter written by a composer or an opinion by a scholar. But when you even paraphrase,
paraphrase someone else's opinions or analyses, those too have to be footnoted. Remember when we discussed the difference between fact and opinion? If you included a discussion about the Orpheus myth and that Beethoven's fourth piano concerto was inspired by it, and that now you think perhaps Beethoven's fifth symphony is also inspired by Orpheus, that does need to be cited. This is a unique approach to analysis and the scholar should get credit in your paper. Footnotes can also be used to simply supply your reader with additional information that may interrupt the flow of your writing, but you think it's important to, to include anyways. This is called an explanatory footnote. Do facts need to be footnoted? No, common knowledge does not need to be footnoted. If you wrote in your paper that Beethoven was born in Bonn, Germany in 1770, you do not need to tell your reader where you got that information because it is common knowledge. And lastly, where do you position your footnotes in the paper itself? There are many different kinds of citations, and there are several different ways of footnoting, either in parentheses in the body of your paper or at the bottom of the page, or even at times at the end of the paper. Those are called endnotes, but they are very rare. The first type, parenthetical citations, is often used in high schools, and in other areas of study. And they are simply placed within the body of the paper itself. Because many different music journals do not do this, we do not use this type of citation at the Boston Conservatory. Rather, we, knew, we use the footnote citation. Footnotes appear at the bottom of the page and are numbered consecutively starting from one and continuing throughout the paper. All word programs have a function that automatically puts the number at, at the end of your sentence and then it will pop up where the footnote should appear at the bottom of the page. And if while writing you edit and cut and paste and move even whole sentences around, your footnote will automatically be renumbered and carried to the new location of your sentence. And don't forget, footnotes should contain all pertinent information for your reader to be able to find your source easily. Here is a sample essay with footnotes at the bottom of the page. You'll see right where the red arrow is, those are your footnotes. And if you notice, there are three of them. Number one, two, and three are all numbered clearly. Footnotes do appear at the bottom of the page, and they do have different punctuation than a bibliography, but they do contain all of the pertinent information that is found in the bibliography. If you notice this one, the very first footnote here is an explanatory footnote, which gives a bit more information. The next are plain footnotes that just tell the reader where exactly you are getting your information. Now let's look a little more closely. Footnotes do look different from bibliographic entries. Notice right away that the author's first name comes first, not his last name first. And this is the opposite of a bibliography. There are also different ways to punctuate as well please make sure to look at the BCB Writing Guide for Musicians to make sure that your punctuation follows our standards. In addition, sometimes you will use the same source again and again in a paper. You do not have to give a complete citation each and every time that you do. Instead, we use what is called a shortened citation. You will simply provide enough information that your reader knows what source you are citing. So for instance, from our sample essay, we have a citation here, number two, that contains the entire citation. Who wrote it? 
the complete title, when it was published, where it was published, and exactly what page you were quoting from. But the next time you use the same source, shorten it. Now, we only use the author's last name, a small little bit of the title, and then a number, which is where we found our information. These are called shortened citations. I do want you to notice that the first time we used that citation, it was in number two, and this now is number eight. One last thing to note is that if you use the same source right after the citation, you do not even have to use a shortened citation. You simply will put ibid, which comes from the Latin term ibidem, meaning in the same place. So if you notice, number two, we have Charles Dibden, a complete history of English stage. And right after number three uses that same exact citation. Just a final word of advice. When in doubt, cite your sources. Don't worry that there are too many footnotes. It's much better than having too few. And try to keep organized and on top of it. It will really, really help you in the long run. Good luck.